Hello, welcome to this episode of Turbo Shed, and in this one we are going to upgrade to donut wideband style knock sensors. Yeah, so we been running the Haltech with the standard 1UZ knock sensors and I haven't been able to get the knock control working properly uh, because the sensors are too noisy and it turns out that the standard 1UZ knock sensors are uh, resonant type. They only have a single wire coming from them uh, and what they do is that they vibrate around 6700 Hertz which is the knock frequency for this engine um, and the problem we've got is that uh, in effect they act as a pre-filter and we don't want that. Uh, we want to be able to use the ECU to do that. So the signals we're getting off the knock sensors at the moment are just garbage. So we're going to upgrade. We're going to change over to Bosch style uh, donut type, as people tend to call them. And these are wideband as such, in that whatever the frequency is that the engine's seeing, these sensors will send that signal to the ECU. And the ECU can do the processing and decide what to do with that, rather than the sensor itself doing the processing. So we are using um, Bosch, which are um, common, common type, or rather we're using Bosch copies. Um, the Bosch part number is uh, down here, which I'll find for you. Uh, and they retail about 60, 65 quid or something, and they're a completely common aftermarket ECU part. Uh, we're actually using Intermo to uh, 19500 part numbers, uh, because they are 20 quid instead of 60 quid, and they're a direct replacement. Um, these standard knock sensors fit things like uh, Porsche 944s and stuff, there's like hundreds of cars use them. So there are our sensors that we're going to fit in and uh, they take a standard Bosch connector so all of the crap that's on the internet about special connector types and all that stuff is complete rubbish. Uh, they use a standard EV1 connector uh, which is the same as injectors and temperature sensors and all sorts of things and they're available for about £1.50 each with pigtails um, so there's no worries there either. So for less than 50 quid we can upgrade to wideband knock sensors it just means that we've got a lot of work to do in the meantime because these are not a direct fit or to the wiring that we've already done. So we've got a bit of work to do. So what I'll do is before I take these knock sensors off, we will show you what the actual knock sensors on the car are reading at the moment, the standard Lexus ones. Um, and I can do this if I go to the spectrogram. Um, I'm going to turn on the data logger first uh, and we can log that to the car. So I'll start the engine. There we are. We've got our idle sorted out nicely. It starts with no throttle and it's not hunting. So I've got the data logger running there. And if I go to the settings and we go to functions and we go to um, knock detection, I've got the knock frequency set at 6700. And I'll show you what's going on here. So if we start the spectrogram, I'm going to leave the ignition timing where it is. There we are. So that's the spectrogram running, and you can see it's just all red. So if I rev it, that's our spectrogram, and it's no good at all can't do anything useful with that. So I'll turn that off and close that and if we look at the data logger we will be able to see I'll turn the car off now here we are so if we just turn on RPM We'll put that on the trace view and we have the signal from the two knock sensors. Trace view one. Hang on. We'll remove that one and we'll put trace view one. Here we can look at the data and you can see where I've been revving it. So if we look at the data that we've got here. So our RPM there is up to about 4000 and the knock sensor readings they're going up all over the place. 
So at tick over it sits at about 44, 46 decibels and then it goes up um, 62, 63 decibels here. But there's no spectrum on it as you can see from the graph. So that's the results. Let's see what it's like after we fit the new knock sensors. So here we are with our knock sensors and our two adapters that we've got here and here is a small harness I've made up because the standard uh, harness for the Lexus knock sensors is only a single wire and we need two wire so one of them goes to the um, one of them will go to the ECU grounds and the other one's obviously the signal so I've used uh, the same colors as we use in the Haltech harness to make it easier and I've numbered these one and two for bank one bank two and that means that um, it should be okay. Now the only problem I've got now is that to get to these we've got to take the top of the engine off uh, because they are buried. Uh, so there's only one thing to do now which is get the car over here in front of the workshop and uh, get all the inner manifolds off so we can put these on. So here's the standard 1UZ block. This is the spare one. I'm showing it on here because we can actually get to this. So here's one of the knock sensors. Start the motor here and here's the hole for the other knock sensor. So these adapters that I've made the idea is that they screw in here, like this. There we are, to give the stud sticking out of there. We can then put the knock sensor on. The Bosch type one. Stick the nut on. And obviously we'll tighten it up in the car. And that's how they're going to sit and if I point the connector upwards we'll be able to get the connector out through a hole in the manifold that we have through here. So I think that's going to work for both of those sensors so all I've got to do now is strip the top off the engine on the car and, um, and we'll put these in, get the wiring harness in and then we can route through and get it wired. You can see I've just lifted this manifold up and um, I don't need to take it all the way off because there's an awful lot of connections and pipes and everything on it and all I need to do is lift it up far enough to get a spanner down to get those knock sensors off down in there. So we'll do that and then we can put our other ones in and start putting it back together. So there's our two studs in after an epic fart on to get in and get them tightened up. I had to use a box spanner in the end, it's just impossible to get to. So we'll put the two sensors on those and the nuts and the wiring harness and then we can put this back together again. Well, we've got the top end of the engine back together. You can see here, you can see the knock sensors hidden all the way down in there, maybe, I hope. Um, and we've got our harness coming out here with our two shielded wires. Um, and I've wired them up the right way around the right colours. So that's bank one with the one line on it and bank two with the two lines, which is blank two is um, grey and blue. And these are our standard connectors, um, which are already shielded cables up to this connector here, which is the old one for the um, starter motor and the two single knock sensors. But obviously that's only got three pins. Well, it's actually got four, one of them's not used, but that's not enough pins for us. So I'm going to leave the starter wire in there and cut these two out of it. 
um, and in the interest of saving my sanity I should really put a connector on this so I don't have to unplug them from the knock sensors to be able to get the engine out because that would be a real pain. So this connector has six wires in it so we'll just use four of those and two of shields and two of the signal wires. Wire this up um, and then we don't have to go through the bulkhead and stuff um, and that should be good. So a bit of wiring and then we'll fire it up and see if our sensors are working. So here's our harness, I've just got it open for now because I want to go and check everything's working right. So we've wired our two screens and our two signals through this multi-pin so we can get it off. So I will plug the starter wire back in here and we will plug the Haltech in. I'll plug the laptop into the Haltech and let's have a look and see if we've got correct knock signals now. Right, so I've started the PC logger. Let's fire the car up. So we've got a signal from both sensors there. The green trace and the blue trace are our two knock sensors. So, well that's good, we've got a signal from them both. We'll just let the car settle down a bit. One thing you might notice actually, I just leant over and turned the key. The car's cold, because I've been working on it all day. Um, I've put a lot of work into the map to be able to get it so it just starts, runs and idles properly and um, it's well worth doing. It takes a bit of work uh, but as you can see it's idling sweet um, and that idle will come down as the car warms up. So I think we've got knock signals there. So if we go to the settings and look at the spectrogram again we go to knock detection. Here we are. And start the spectrogram. Hopefully this won't be like it was last time. Oh look at that. Very nice. So there's our size view. 6700 is our, it's our calculated knock frequency. Uh, and as you can see we've got a reasonably clean signal there. That looks like it should. Right, what I need to do now is rev it up. I'll go and jump in the passenger's side, the driver's seat, and we'll do that. That all looks good. And if we look at the... sensors are staying around 20 to 25 so I think we're all good I think we need to get it onto the dyno now and put some timing in it make it knock and do some calibration happy days we'll tidy the wiring up and we're done so there you go that's how you go about putting um, wideband knock sensors onto a 1UZ uh, it's a bit of a nightmare getting to it uh, the wiring wasn't too bad and we've now got signals that we can work with in the ECU so we can turn the knock control on. Um, we just need to get it into a situation where we can lightly load it, make it knock in order to do the, the calibration. Uh, I'll probably do that on the dyno though. So that's it. We are another step closer to making big power safely and join us next time when we will probably be on the dyno sorting this out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share and let us know. We always welcome your comments. We read them all. And thank you very much, everybody.